So in part two of chapter two, we're going to be looking a little bit more into how to be an educated consumer. In, in the last uh, short video, we discussed that after understanding all the scientific research and, and knowing that nutrition is an evolving science, we have to learn to become an educated consumer. There's a lot of information out there that is given by people that are not trained. There's a term called quackery. And that means there are people that are offering these medical treatments, but they're not doctors. They're not trained in that area. So it really is illegal. And they provide nutrition and you know advice and different types of meal plans, and they don't have the proper training. So you have to be careful for that. Just because somebody says you know that they can create a meal plan for you doesn't make them a nutritionist because they read you know some articles on. Uh, the internet or because they you know subscribe to some kind of a journal and they read things and they feel like oh I, I have enough knowledge now I can share that information but you gotta be careful make sure that you're not falling for that look for red flags there's always red flags if anything promises a quick and easy fix it's usually not valid you know take this pill and you can lose 20 pounds in your first week if it sounds too good to be true it is Sometimes people will give you a testimonial, um, you know, even you've seen so many, I'm sure, and you hear about Dr. Oz, who's supposed to be a reputable doctor, and so many times his face, you know, is attached to a product and he's promoting some kind of thing. I remember thinking, wow, that must be pretty good if Dr. Oz is promoting it. But then I remember watching on TV, he was on the news, and he was saying, please do not uh, fall for any of those advertisements. They're false advertisements. I've never given permission to have my face or my name used on any of those products. So that's a red flag. People do stuff because they know if they put Dr. Oz's name on it, you're going to buy their product. So, um, you know, look out for things that are like statements that sound really crazy and there's no reference backing it up. And if somebody says a study was done, well, a study is not enough. In order for anything to be valid and reliable, you have to have results repeated time and time again and getting those same results to make it a valid and reliable study. So one study is not enough. Look out for disclaimers. A lot of times there'll be a disclaimer on the product that the results are not typical uh, based on the claims. You know, it depends on the individual. Or you might see, you know, try this for 30 days and you know you have a money back guarantee if it's not good and you know this weight loss formula is guaranteed to give you the most energy and blah 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 there's so many different guaranteed results but you know those that doesn't mean it's real and it doesn't mean that you're really going to get those results and it is a very individual thing point is you really need to understand that the best way to get information is through reliable nutrition experts so there's so many different sources you can go to. Obviously, someone like myself, a nutrition professor, registered dietitians, any type of nutrition specialist, they work in either clinical nutrition or community nutrition. Some work on a more general level. Some work in the clinical world with people with diseases. But you need to know who to seek out to get that information from, and you know you can trust that information. So people with degrees and practical experiences and certification in nutrition, you know, can be a more reliable resource. Sometimes somebody can call themselves a nutritionist, but they're not. You know, do they have anything to back that up as far as a degree, a certification, or any practical experience? Even physicians, they are not nutritionists. They refer to nutritionists because they're trained in the medical world, but they're not trained in nutrition. The next part of the chapter talks about dietary supplements. So in addition to being an educated consumer with so many nutrition type, you know, diets and, and etc., you have to be an educated consumer with dietary supplements. So many supplements are out there. If you walk into vitamin shop, for example, you get dizzy just looking at the walls and the aisles of, of products. And you know, how would you know one from the other? So there is something that came out called the Dietary Supplement and Health Education Act. It came out in 1994. And it's supposed to um, you know, help with understanding you know, what goes into 
a, a supplement? What's the difference between a vitamin, a mineral, a botanical, an herb? Um, you know, and it's, it's, it's something that helps, gives us some kind of guidelines with regard to supplements. Because remember, as I said, there are so many out there that um, if we don't have some information, how would we know one from the other? And even within, let's say, just a vitamin D, for example, if you go and look at vitamin D, there are so many different companies with different um, products and ingredients and stuff. So how do you know which one is right? So choosing dietary supplements can be very, very daunting task. Remember that supplements are regulated as food, not as drugs by the FDA. So the FDA has some rules and regulations, but they're not as strict as the ones placed on drugs. So a lot of them are not tested by the FDA. The FDA, the FDA really regulates the labeling on your supplements and the claims that you're allowed to use. So if this says, oh, this pill will make you lose 10 pounds in one day. Well, the FDA may not allow that. And so, you know, there are some companies that get away with putting out products that don't even go through FDA uh, regulations. So you need to really, really be careful. Use supplements wisely. If you're thinking about it, really determine, is it necessary? Because there are so many times you don't need it. Most of the nutrients you get from food. So consult a physician. Um, for different reasons. One, to test you to see if you have any deficiencies to even know if you should be taking a supplement and also if you do take supplements, specifically ones that are not regulated, ones that come from other countries, you have to be very careful because something from China, for example, does not require the labeling that we do in the United States, so they may not put ingredients on the label and you must, you're thinking you're taking something that's safe and organic and natural, and meanwhile, you may have to be taking something that has a harmful chemical in it. So you have to be very careful, but if you do take something and you have signs and symptoms, go to an ER or a doctor immediately, and any claim that, you know, these supplements make about their benefits, you have to really research to make sure that it's reliable. So in uh, thinking about supplements and labeling. We're going to get into labeling um, in another, you know, chapter, but understanding how to read a label. You know, look at that every time you're going to buy something. You know, look at the, the label. What is the serving size? What's the amount per serving? And does this fall within the guidelines? Like, for example, in this particular one, vitamin D 2000 IUs, that's an upper limit. You're not supposed to take more than 2000 or it can be toxic doesn't necessarily mean it will be, but it can be. So you need to understand that and understand what are these ingredients? You know, there's so many different ingredients in here. What are they and how can they affect you? So reading supplement labels are just as important as reading food labels, which we'll get into shortly in another chapter. So when we think about supplements and we think about nutrition, there's so many different things that we can use to help with our typical taking care of ourselves and um, the medicine that we normally use. So in addition to traditional medicine, there's complementary and alternative medicine. So that could be mean using herbal products and supplements to treat disease, using chiropractic manipulations and homeopathy and naturopathy, massage therapy. These are all different things that are used. Some use it in lieu of using traditional medicine and that's not recommended. But if you use this complementary and alternative medicine in combination with traditional medicine and conventional medicine practices with a physician, the combination is called integrative medicine and it can be beneficial. So point is with all of this in this chapter is research, research, and research some more until you feel comfortable that what you're doing is the best thing for you, you and your health.